Hi, welcome to Bob and Tam's Excellent Adventures. Today we're in Texas and we're going to take you to a fort that's not really there anymore and the outpost to it that's been totally refurbished. And we're going to take you to Texas' second oldest. Well, you're going to have to stay tuned and find out it's till the end what that is. So come along to our adventure today and we'll show you what we saw. Let's go. Today's adventure brings us to Camp Verde. 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 That's what it is. Camp Verde. Verde means green. What? <laughs> it's been around since 1856. So back in 1854, the Secretary of War Jefferson Davis, who later became the Confederacy president, got $30,000 for the army to get camels. That's what this is all about behind us. They built this here for an outpost for the, what's the name of the place again? Camp Verde. Verde River, there's a fort that used to be just about a mile west of here. Uh, not here anymore. But back in 1900s, there was a big flood and it pretty much took everything out. So this building's been completely remodeled back then to try to look a little bit more up to date to what we see today. Very nice. So it all started back in ninth, whoops, wrong year, 1856. It all started back in 1856 when the first camels were shipped over here from Egypt, which it took almost a whole year to get here. It was 1857 in the spring before the first 50, camel, 50 camels showed up. And shortly after that, they got another 50 camels in 1865 which gave them a total of 100 camels these camels were used for hauling the ammunition and food and all kinds of stuff all across they could go a long distance and there was all this proven facts so pretty much uh the outpost here was taken over by the confederacy and then later on the u.s uh, after the civil war came back and they took it over they closed the base down and because this was such a popular place for a post office and a general store they decided to go ahead and keep it open then in 2003 they totally remodeled the place to what it is today so we're going to take a look at that today we also ate here today and how good was the food mm, it was really good really good food so if you're out this way uh, in Texas, you could check this place out. So it was really a neat place to go to. So we'll take a look here and go through and look at the general store. Uh, there's some of the original post office boxes that they had are still in here. Uh, they still have mail that actually comes here for some of the residents that live around here. Uh, pretty neat place. Yes, it was. The tater tots were excellent. We had pulled pork and it's a really cool store. Very expensive, but really cool. They got some nice stuff, very high end. It's worth coming to see. The food wasn't really high priced. It was the stuff that's inside there. This court. It's kind of like a boutique, not so much a uh, general, general store. store. <laughs> so let's go inside, take a look and see what we have. You can see what we ate and uh, see what you think about this place. Write down in the comments what you liked and what you didn't like about this place. And if you've ever been here before, it's kind of, we were happen to be real close to here. The town we're in is... Benera. Benera. Benera, Texas. We're actually staying there, which is a whole nother little neat town, which I may add to this video. We're going to do some videotaping down there. Uh, really neat town. There's a lot of little cottages around here that you can rent and stay in. Uh, we're actually in the RV again, so uh, we'll have a little bit more about that. So stay tuned. See what's coming up and how we're going to end this. About a 20 minute drive to get to Camp Verde from our campground. When we arrived it was a really distinguished looking building that we pulled up to. It was easy to find parking. We came actually during the middle of the week. Once we found this place to park, parked the vehicle and headed down the front. It was really landscaped very nicely. You could see the buildings. They were all made out of stone. Uh, there was a little creek that ran along the side of it. It was really nice to check it out. We mainly went through the main entrance to get in. Camel. Get you. Uh, 
Let me get you a peg, a rubber peg. There's a rubber camel. Good luck, good luck camels. camels. So the general store was really quaint. It was, they really did a good job on refurbishing it. It's still got its old charm and originality. They have two levels, the upstairs, which had a lot of different high-end candles and diffusers, soaps, lotions. It was really nice. They had a really cool view from the top, kind of like a loft. They had handbags and totes and purses, makeup bags, carry-ons. They had everything you could imagine. Lots of stuff to make your house smell good and yourself. They really have it fixed up nice. It still has that old feel of a old general store. So the general store was at one end and the restaurant was at the other. It's all kind of connected by a long hallway. They have a main entrance. Lots of friendly staff around every corner. They were very helpful. Everyone was very nice and pleasant. We had a yummy lunch. And if you like iced tea, you'll love this. It was really good. We had barbecue sandwiches and I had sweet potato tater tots. They were very good. Highly recommended. The grounds outside were just as nicely kept up as the inside. They had wooden sculptures around the premises of different animals. They had every kind of gadget and gizmo imaginable for your kitchen. Things you didn't even know you needed. They had jellies, jams, apple butters, all different kinds of things. And the original post office is still there with some of the post boxes. That was kind of cool to see. They had the old wooden floors. They kept everything as original as they could. They did a really good job. They even had postcards birthday cards, things you could send off, lots of summer bags, it's getting close to summer there, cowboy hats, boots, and the outside was just as pristine as the inside was. This is well worth your time to come see if you're in the area. They had several different courtyard areas that you could take your picnic lunch out and eat. Or I guess if you got your food in the restaurant to go, you could come out here and eat it. It was a beautiful day. A little on the cooler side, but the sun was shining. A little bit of breeze. They had wind chimes throughout. Some of the original rock work, I believe, is still there. Very well kept. Fireplace for those cool evenings in Texas. Then several different waterfalls throughout the grounds there. Lots of greenery. It wasn't quite spring yet, so the trees weren't in blossom. But like I said, lots of greenery. The grass was green, shrubbery. They had a few flower areas and a tiki pole. All in all, it was very nice. Very well kept, pristine. Worth stopping by. Here's another one of the fountains. Just kind of a bubbly brook sound. And then we had the drone shots to show the area. Texas is known for its vast, un wide open spaces. 
This is definitely one of them. There's the Verde River that flows right next to it. And the overall view of the grounds. We hit the road to go find the old Camp Verde Fort. It was a United States Army facility established in 1856, July 8th, in Kern County, Texas, it's in between San Antonio and El Paso. As you can see from the video, you can't see anything left of any remnants of the camp. The Camp Verde was abandoned on April 1st, 1869. The ruins of the officer's quarters are located on what is now private land. A Texas state historical marker at the entrance of the gate by the road. The site was added to the National Register in May 25th of 1973. As we pulled back onto the main highway, when we looked to the left, we actually saw some bison over there. So we stopped and took a little check them out on this farm. And we noticed that one of them even had a small baby with him. So we spent a few minutes here checking them all out, seeing what they can do, following them around. They were so massive in size, luckily there was a fence between us. Then across the street from them looked like some Texas Longhorns. They seem to be more uh, excited about us being there than us seeing them. And then off in the far was a whole bunch of antelope running along the lake. Then on the way back, we had to travel back through Bandera, Texas. So we wanted to take a quick look, quick stop, and see what we could see there. It was a pretty neat looking old town. Had a couple of bars, had a lot of little gift shops. Uh, one of the unique things there was they had the second oldest bar consecutively opened in Texas. So we had to check that out. The city of Bandera is located less than an hour away from San Antonio. Bandera, Texas is known as the worldwide as the cowboy capital. The unique landscape and architecture shows you why it's one of the kind cities. Bandera has played an extremely important role in keeping the unique American traditions of the Texas Cowboy alive. The Bandera General Store Building is 108 years old. It was built in 1907. It has the original wood floors, the original tin tile ceiling. It has been a saddle shop, a feed store, an appliance store. A word has it, caskets were sold in a basement during prohibition the cowboys drank beer and played cards on the empty caskets now, isn't that unique the building was also once a movie theater at one time the projector caught on fire and burned part of the ceiling which is now patched with the plywood because of the original tin tile ceiling could not be duplicated one other unique thing in this town is arky blue silver dollar saloon First as the Foxhole and later Arky's Blue Silver Dollar, it's the oldest continuously operating honky-tonk in Texas. So that was worth checking out. We went downstairs, checked out the bar. Uh, it was very dark. You could definitely tell it's been around a long time. We're going to go ahead and wrap the video up right here. If you hung around all the way to the end, thank you for doing that. Make sure you have subscribed, you've liked our channel. Make sure you leave a comment down in the bottom. Let us know that you really do care. We do need people to watch all the way to the end because we do get credit for this. We're aiming, we're up to about 285 views now, subscribers. We're looking for more. So if you have friends that would like to check us out, send a link to them. Let them get on YouTube, watch us, help our channel grow. Because without you, we're not going anywhere. Oh, we'll be stuck here forever. 
So we hope you enjoyed the video. Like Bob said, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and ring that bell for notifications. Write us a comment, we'll write you back, and we hope you enjoyed our trip to Texas, and we'll see you on the next one. And we're going to leave you with some water going down. They call it a river. I call it a creek. Maybe that'll soothe all your troubles away. See you next video.